Hello, I'm Kelly Dwyer, founder of Nature Education Opportunities. Are you looking for some simple, inexpensive techniques to get your kids outside and keep them focused successfully? Well, discovery loops are easy to make and use. All you need is a skein of yarn, a thicker uh, weight is preferable, as well as a lighter color because it will show up more readily on the ground. It's great contrast and a pair of scissors. So very simple materials to get started with this project. So you want to cut the desired length of the loop. For example, I have here, these are three foot sections that once I have them all looped together, cut them and then just tie them off. This is a four foot loop, so it's a little bit bigger. Um, one easy technique for creating a bunch of loops at the same time is to just kind of wrap them around your arm and then just cut so you have maybe 20 loops that you can create at the same time. So you can kind of do this very efficiently. And then one thing that I like about the four foot loops, it's a bigger loop, so it's good for those cooperative learning explorations. So you can have two or three kids sitting around the loop and making some observations within that. Um, so inside what you'll wanna do is really spend that time prepping your kids on what it's like to be outside for instruction time. Uh, some of you have probably have already done this and the kids know what the expectations are, but it's really worth that time to set the expectations. This is not recess. I do teach a whole teacher workshop on how do you do that successfully because outside instruction time is just really incredibly filled with benefits for all of us. So once you are outside, gather the students in a large circle and have them plant their feet in the grounds as if they're tree roots so you don't have that sort of scuffling all around so that they're paying attention. And then hand out the loops and then what I've done before, which is kind of a nice patterning exercise, have them count off by threes. And then once they get their loop, they've counted off by one, two, or three, put their loop on the ground. And you can, for example, have all of the ones put their loops down as a circle. You can have all of the twos put their loops in their designated areas and create a square. And the threes, can actually create a triangle. So that's the benefit of having the yarn rather than a hula hoop. It has that flexibility for patterning um, in different sizes. And then once they're sitting by their loop, and one thing that I do too is I have big squares of plastic shower curtain liner that creates that waterproof barrier for insects and any moisture on the ground. Have them sit by their loop and then always take that deep centering breath. I do this with every activity that I do with kids and adults. That keeps us sort of in the moment, focus with what we're going to do. So a nice deep breath in through the nose and exhale through the mouth. That will signify to the kids that it's time to really be serious and perform like a scientist out here. And then you can ask them those inquiry-based questions. What are you seeing? You can have notebooks if it's appropriate for the ages or even a little sketch pad for the younger kids. Do you see insects? Are you looking at leaves? What are the colors of the grass and the, and the different plant matter that's in the loop? Does the moss feel nice and soft? Are the leaves crunchy? Really build in those descriptive language arts uh, as they're looking into the loops. What does the um, plant life look like? What are the colors and patterns and textures? Lots of those questions to hone in on observation. Um, one thing that it's really nice to do too is have some of the kids lead that type of exploration or that type of lesson. So have them think of the questions they want to ask their uh, their peers. Put them in the role of teacher and really see them develop those thinking and listening skills and speaking skills. Some of the cross curriculum ideas that I've come up with in the past is we've already talked about having patterns as they set the loops ready for observation, but you can also have them do fractions. So for example, the loops could go down in a circle format and then any extra yarn that you have, bring that out. They can divide the loop in half. So they're looking at half the circle and then even more advanced fractions with other pieces of yarn so that they're honing their observation and also applying fractions in a real life, real world situation. Um, predictions are fun. So what I've done, had the kids inside um, as a language arts activity, write down what they think they will see in their discovery loops based on several variables like weather. Think about the weather, the time of day, even season of the year. So it gets them writing, gets them thinking about those context clues around them. Art, it's a great opportunity to um, put the loops on the ground, 
make great sketches, detailed observations so that they have that data, bring that information inside and maybe with some modeling clay or other materials, they could make a 3D model of what was in their discovery loop and then share it um, with you know the classmates or even other classes. Uh, I, as an adult, have definitely used these loops when I'm feeling overwhelmed or stressed or frazzled and I like to just get outside for a minute and I need to focus my attention and get it off of what I might be thinking about. I put a discovery loop on the ground, sit there for a little bit, and it's amazing what I've noticed. I did this a couple of days ago and I saw ants actually out just dragging um, debris back to their back to their ant hill. So it's, it's really a great opportunity to focus on the real micro uh, level. Oh, one thing too, if you have magnifying glasses and your kids are used to using them, this is another nice opportunity to really look even at a more detailed level within the loop. Um, so again, discovery loops are fun, they're easy, they're inexpensive. One quick little tip about storage, when you have uh, 25 of them or so, use two of the big clips so that you're keeping them together rather than in a big snarled mass um, as has happened to me before. So just try to learn from my experience and then keep them so that they're not, you're trying to untangle when you're outside. So again, enjoy your discovery loops. Your kids will really enjoy them. It's quick, simple, easy, and very effective.